All right, so in this tutorial, we're going to cover the user interface and how we can adjust it. Um, so initially, when we look at this interface, we can see that we have the tool palette here, and we have most of our tools over on the left-hand side. But most people are actually right-handed. So what we're going to do is take a couple moments and look at some of the adjustment tools and how we can change our interface to make sure that ZBrush is working for us. So I'm left-handed. And I want to make a couple of adjustments. Uh, I'm going to grab my tool option. I'm going to drag it over here, close my light box. And this makes more sense for me. So I can do the same for any palette that I want to use. I can grab my alpha palette and drop it here. Uh, my brush palette, I'm going to drop it here. Any palette that I think will come in handy when working, I'll load them on the left hand side. Um, and the ones that I'll use a little bit later. Uh, I'll put them on the right hand side so I'll grab light all right and just collapse those palettes there we go so we got some really uh, easy ways to make some quick changes to make our workflow a little easier um, but that's an initial thing that is very helpful but there's some things we can do to really adjust our user experience so I'm going to go to preferences and config actually let me drag this over here that way we can more easily scroll through it. The next thing I want to do is go into my config tab and hit enable customize. What this does is it makes my interface live. Uh, if you notice when I turn it on everything shrinks so I can see all of the maximum palettes trays that I can use. I can load my tools and tabs on. Um, now what this allows me to do is to begin to make adjustments. So any tools that I want to move or that I don't necessarily need, I can adjust here. So let's see. For example, um, I'm going to hit Control and Alt, and I'm just going to dump the gradient tabs here. That there. And so anything that I drag directly to the canvas is deleted. So. Um, these are taking up a lot of space, um, so we may make a couple of adjustments there. I'm going to go ahead and close the preference, and let's go to um, our brushes. Let's go to the brush tab. So I probably want something a lot smaller to save space, give me more canvas. Um, once you get comfortable with ZBrush, you pretty much know exactly what you're looking at, so you don't need those big uh, palettes all the time, those big options all the time. So let's go ahead and make our canvas live so we can have access to all of our palettes and brushes and tools. All right, here we go. So when we go back to the brush um, palette, we can also hold this down. If we just select and hold down, it gives us the options of all the brushes that we have. And so after we, as we use brushes, they'll tend to load up. So let's go ahead and OK. And let's see, brushes, I don't want to use a standard brush. By hitting S, I can select the standard brush, and it's already selected. So let's see what else. Um, spiral brush I want to load up, and mm, curve brush, clay builder brush, polish brush, trim dynamic brush. So as I scroll through, I'll tend to pick up more and more brushes that I normally use in my workflow. And I'll start to develop a nice little list. Well. Instead of having only, uh, you know, one big one here, I can actually load all of my brushes here. But I'll, I'll use the space we have available on the top. So I'm just going to hit Control, Alt, and just begin to drag my buttons up top, one brush at a time. I'm going to move that down a little bit. Didn't look like it lined up properly. So that's certainly one way that we can set up our brushes and begin to create a more friendly user interface. I'm going to go ahead and even just drop that off here. And I can load my brushes here instead. So we'll go ahead and drop everything off here. And just put we'll put our brushes this coordinate right here in this case. So with me being left-handed, I want to do the least amount of work as possible when, while I'm working. Yes, that's laziness, but I love ZBrush because it allows me to be lazy. So I'll load up all the brushes I want to use, um, and this will work for me. 
and as far as our alphas I could do the same so I'm going to go ahead and drop my gradient palette um, my color palette there I'm going to drop all of that in the center and just make this uh, a little more useful so go ahead and grab a bunch of different alphas that I think I'd like to use while I'm working all right so I can load those alphas here well that's I can bring the I can bring the big alpha tab down or I can bring the small so it's a more efficient way of using the alphas um, than what ZBrush may come with initially all right and so now I have my alphas here so as I sculpt I go ahead and go back to my tool make poly mesh make this live and let's go ahead and divide it quickly So as I sculpt, I can switch very quickly in between tools. Clay build up, there we go. And this makes a more efficient workflow. So as I set my user interface up, I want to make sure that I have everything that I need. So let's go and grab strokes. Um, we'll put the stroke, I'll use the big version of the stroke, and then grab a couple of, let's move this over here so we can look at it directly, and grab a couple of the ones that I'll use the most, if not all, and just dump them underneath, uh, here and here. And yeah, I think that's right, I'll grab the rectangle too. All right, and I know that's going off the screen, so I'll put it up here for now. Actually, we'll just throw it away and maybe move a couple of these guys off. And just customize and adjust to whatever my needs are. Bam. Move this guy up, and now I have room to bring my drag direct here. There we go. So this is working out a lot better than what I initially had. Um, we can do the same with buttons uh, and sliders. Um, let's go ahead and clear this top off here. Don't need those brushes anymore. But I want to move my active points here um, just to give me. Now, notice how when I'm ready to pulse those tabs that I'm sliding, you get a frame that lets you know where you are. So I'll move this guy right here. Let's see if we're going to move it down. And I, I just deleted it, so I have to go grab it again. So let's go to Preferences. I'm going to grab my total points because I accidentally deleted that. And Control-Alt and place them right next. There we go. And so this gives me a, a much more natural user interface. I really enjoy this. Um, it just makes things more fun. So let's go ahead and look at some other things I may want to address while I set up my user interface. Um, let's go to material. We'll pop this side tab out. That'll be a little quicker. And I want to grab the little versions here. And I'll grab a couple and just list them. Let's see. Let's see if there are any that oh yeah toy plastic I'll use quite a bit. Level blend. There we go. And put these guys here. And RGB level. All right. Now, right now I have some pretty big um, tabs that I'm placing here. There's something we can do in preferences to help us with that. And if we go over to preferences and hit interface. And our UI, we can unclick Y buttons. So if you want the bigger buttons, you can switch that out. And we can also turn the button size down. 
So the next time we start ZBrush, it'll take effect. So that's pretty nice. Um, let's go through a couple of the palettes. I'll tell you some of the things that I normally uh, need and just set them up. So I'll go to my brush palette. Um, I'll go to auto masking. Here's something I use all the time. Back face masking. So I'm going to bring that right here to the top. And I'm going to move it here. Pretty close to the left hand side. Um, tablet pressure. Let's go ahead and grab that too. Put that right here. Color. I think we'll leave color up there for now. Um, but if you wanted to grab, let's, let's pop this over here. If you wanted to grab one of the color swatches, you could just drag it right here at the bottom. Let's place it here for now. Um, but more than likely, I would grab a black and white gradient bar before I grabbed a color gradient bar. Let's move this guy out again. There we go. So I could adjust the value and the color. Usually that's all I really want to do with the value bars. Let's move this guy up top for now. Actually over here. There we go. And I realized that my gradient bar isn't on the screen, so I'll move it up here. Hypothetically speaking, we'll put it right there. That way you can see it. And so now I have control over the gradient or the color. Fairly easy. And so, let's see, what else would I want to, oh, even over here, I feel like oftentimes we waste a lot of space, so you can just grab the ones you don't want, the floor, you can throw it away, one throw, drop it on a canvas, and that's pretty much how I, how I would set up a user interface. Now, after you set up your user interface and you have a custom um, screen or program that you like, you go into go back to configuration and you can say save UI so all right and I can name this test UI and save and so anytime I like I can switch that user interface out so I'm going to go ahead and load up the user interface I actually use more often than not and I have a couple of interfaces that I've saved. So I have one for teaching, I have one for sculpting that comes. And here are the generic ones. So I'm going to load my own personal. Um, let's see, I think it is this one. There we go. And just click open. And so here's my setup. Um, here are some buttons and tabs that I've grabbed off of my tool, even the tool sub palette. Um, so I don't have to always dig in. I can just simply hit delete hidden, show part, high part, I delete lower, low res. The buttons that I use the most, I just want to have them here. Um, MRGB, M, um, material, RGB, color, material and color. The tools that I use the most, I want to go ahead and minimize this so you guys can see the bottom. Oh, all right, one second. Here we go. Jumped off the screen so we can see the bottom half. Um, of my setup also. So you can see I have a bunch of different tabs that I use so I can simply change the color very quickly here if I like. Instead of always having to go all the way to the color tab, um, make an adjustments there, the document tab, I can just do it directly here. So the customization is um, a really strong selling point for ZBrush. And once I'm done, you know, once I have a user interface that I like, I just simply go save UI again and save it as a file. And I can also have multiple interface uh, setups. So if, for example, I'm teaching and I want to have a minimized set of tools, this is the user interface that I will have. It looks very familiar to most new users. Um, the tools that I want to use the most are right here. I can hop in and out, and I won't confuse anyone. 
Um, and so as you get comfortable in ZBrush, you can make adjustments to your setup and it can become more, I guess, more detailed. You can bring in more buttons or less. But the, the best part is it's what's, what works best for you. So that's um, pretty much the most important part of that. I want to run through a couple buttons um, that I think are important. I won't go through them all. Um, I talked about the interface tab where you can adjust and go from wide buttons to small buttons to actually adjust in the size. So in the next time, it'll start with smaller buttons. Let's go back to wide. Um, when we see the auto hide 2D tools, that works for, let's pop out here so I can show everyone, go to tool tab. Uh, we go to the simple brush, uh, always switch, skip note. All right, let's try that again. So now my 2D tabs are hidden. And so that's just one of those things that if you don't want them there because you're never going to use them, you can adjust that there. You can always have your colorize active float menu here, and it'll colorize your active floats that you have. Um, you can make those little adjustments to even how your user interface actually works as far as colors. Um, I'll show one that I think is important. So let's go to the colors first. All right, because this is actually a really nice thing. I'm going to pick um, a really cool color and I want to change, start changing my user interface. So let's pull this off and bring it over here so we can keep it up on the screen. So as you hover over the tab, it'll tell you what that tab is. So if you look right here at the bottom, you'll see my information show up. So that's my switch color button and that's my switch button press. So let's just simply select this. Now, when I select that, whatever color I have in my color palette, that'll change the color of those buttons or that option. So let's go ahead and change this guy too. Use the mouse to make that happen. Here we go. All right. And so you can see that the background change. So let's do something maybe a little brighter for that and select. There we go. Um, and you can go through each button and figure out, you know, the things that you want to change or make an adjustment to because maybe you're just tired of looking at that orange. Um, it's pretty simple to do. There we go. And you can go through and read what each one does and make those adjustments. So I really like the fact that we have those options in ZBrush. Um, Pop-up opacity, so that's when your pop-ups come up. We can turn them up. And sometimes it's a little easier to read, so you can see the Tile Text 2 color, especially for new users. There are a couple tools in here that are really helpful for new users, so um, keep an eye on that. That's all I really want to cover in the eye colors. Um, the Magnify Glass, this is a really good tool. If you have a hard time seeing ZBrush, and often people do, you can turn your magnifying glass on and what it will do is as you scale over your buttons it's more easily seen you can also adjust the radius and turn it down some you can turn the zoom up or down so it's a little bit uh, like a magnifying glass you can turn the curvature up and I don't use this often, but I can see for someone who struggles um, to see everything, uh, it may be difficult for you. That's a really good tool. So the magnifying glass, your tablet options are here too. You can set this so that if you have a, a Wacom, a Wacom tablet, or a Cintiq, Bamboos, you can set it so that everything that you have set in your computer for those tablets or the Cintiq will automatically happen in ZBrush. You can adjust the sensitivity, how it works, lazy mouse pressure, etc. Um, if you come here, you can load up your GoZ where you can create paths to Maya, 3ds Max, Photoshop. So I, most people who use ZBrush also use secondary or you know other programs to work with their artwork or their 3D. So here's where you can make those connections happen. And here's a really important one, your quick save. So when you uh, initially load up ZBrush, you have your quick save options. Um, you can say the first tab, let's say every 30 minutes, 
I wanted to do a quick save or every 10 minutes I want a quick save and so every 10 minutes it'll automatically quick save now let's say that you're working for 45 minutes straight you're really digging a project if you take a break you can set this to let's go five minutes if I don't touch ZBrush for five minutes it will reset it will rest and it'll give me a save um, this option is to skip the history and the undos when we do a quick save um, uh, ZBrush is pretty good with memory so I like to keep the history options on just in case I want to step back this allows me to do that uh, now here's a big deal depending on how much information you uh, how many files you, you want to save or how much room you have on your hard drives uh, you can make an adjustment so I like to work somewhere with I don't know 50 because I bounce in between projects so I'd rather have those quick save files uh, backed up I'd rather have too many and then have to go in and delete them eventually than to have it set at like something like two and what happens is every time I get a third file it saves over the first so too many in this case is, is, is definitely better than not enough too much is better than not enough we can also delete our quick save files here and so that's really all I have for the customization of your interface here in ZBrush. Hopefully you find some really cool things, really cool tools that you can use. Um, and I will try to include a couple sample interfaces for you that you can practice loading. And once again, you just load them by going here to preference, configuration, load UI, and you would find the file, the folder. So let's try that really quick just to, and you can select whichever user interface you like click open and voila it'll load up for you you can also simply look right here on the right hand side and go to the user interface loader and it'll go through the folder and select all of the options there so if you save your user interfaces into the original folder in your Z startup folder you'll be able to hop right through them and figure out which one you want to use at the time so you can make a user interface just for sculpting you can make a user interface for poly painting etc one for modeling where you set the tools up uh, that'll be best for you there um, outside of that I think we covered everything we need to cover for this um, oh worst case scenario if you have a problem and you screw something up you can restore to the standard user interface and it'll go back to ZBrush's original settings all right so good luck and enjoy um yeah.